Hey everybody, it's Wilbitz. We're playing Ace Attorney Investigations. Miles Edgeworth! It's doing some shenanigans in the courthouse! Sir, what is to become of the trial under the Codopian Embassy, staff member's murder? Indeed, since both the suspect and the prosecutor are now dead. The case will be dismissed. In other words, the trial ends here prematurely. Ha! Looks like you'll have to wait just a bit longer for your big debut. I suppose it can't be helped. The evidence of this trial will be transferred to you in a little while. So what do you think about the murder of the Kadopian Embassy staff member? And the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell? What an outrageous circus it has all become. That Faraday brought it all upon himself with his naivete. An outrageous circus. Right, sir. I grow weary of this topic. Edward, I will have you assigned to a different case. Mm. Papa, you will come and watch my courtroom debut next, won't you? Hmm, I'll consider it. Sir, if I may, please, allow me to continue with my investigation. Whatever for? I know that there is already a suspect in the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. However, there is not enough evidence to prove that it was he who committed the crime. I'd like to continue investigating in order to find the perfect proof of his guilt. The perfect proof? Don't make me laugh. A worthless person like you has no right to claim such a thing as perfection. Um, Papa, who do you think is the real culprit behind these murders? Miles and I were competing to see who can find the real killer first. Um, we're going back in time because this is the first time we met Kay, and also Kay's father, who has been killed. Just so you know. Brief summary. Plus, being able to investigate a real crime scene is a really rare opportunity. It would give us some real-life experience, wouldn't you agree? Hmm. <laughs> If you want to investigate this case that much, then do as you wish. Then you're allowing us to continue. In court, your top priority is to win, and a solid investigation is one of the keys to winning. We have to make sure you become recognized as a first-rate prosecutor, don't we? It wouldn't be very interesting otherwise. I'm returning home now. Edgeworth, Francisca, see to it I'm not disturbed, save for the results of your competition. Yes, sir. Of course, Papa. Francisca? Thank you. What are you thinking me for? Your logic earlier was built on this crappy detective's lie. That means that the competition is still on. Yes, just as you wished. <laughs> I couldn't let you get off so easily. Now then, let's see how well you fare on the investigation from here, Miles Edgeworth. I know I didn't have enough information yet, so my first order of business would be to question anyone involved with this case, including this... What are all these guards doing? I don't know how a water fountain works! Oh, jeez! It just keeps spraying water! Let's talk to him. Let's get this out of the way. Oh, I can't stop the water, sir! Ah! It seems that the man who was here earlier broke it by drinking from it too much. Why don't you fools who pretended to not see the foolishly foolish actions of a foolish fool? Well then, why don't you lend the officer a hand? As I sh if I should have anything to do with this. Besides, that fatter drinking fool's mouth is the thing that officer should be covering. This gives an officer a description of the water guzzler later. She seems to have quite the grudge. It sounds to me like someone wanted a drink. Are you thirsty, Francesca? Yeah, you are thirsty, aren't you? Thirsty metaphorically. I'm talking about how lonely you are. Ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Alright, let's talk to the other people. Wow, this thing is so incredibly detailed. My inner modeling fanboy is impressed. Gosh, I wish I had done just anything else other than be a policeman. If only I were making tiny models right now, instead of stopping crimes. Hmm, I'm not exactly a fan of plastic models per se, but even I can sense the superb quality of this model. I simply cannot comprehend how that man can feel so much for such a trifle! Oh, uh, uh, I see. You are a disciple of my father. So you would do well to guard yourself against an interest in such unproductive things! 
Yes, perhaps I should take up while whipping people, like the young lady over here. That's productive, isn't it, Francisca? Makes a lot of friends, don't you, when you hit people? Oh, I'm not mad at you, I'm sorry, Francisca. It's an incredibly detailed model, isn't it? Uh, I heard that it costs as much to make that as it costs to build the courthouse house itself. But what's the point of making such an expensive model? I felt the exact same way upon hearing it. <laughs> it's so hard to understand such foolishness! Agreed. We, we like each other. We hate everyone else. They're all stupid and dumb. I don't want to talk to you yet. I don't want to talk to you yet! I'll get to you in a minute! Uh, hey Gumshoe. It wasn't me, I tell you. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, I understand. So let's just calm down, okay, buddy? I doubt I'll get anything useful from the detective while he's this agitated. All right, well, try to take a powder, will ya? You? you sleeping? Sir, nothing to report, sir! <laughs> Is there no one who will make this man take responsibility for his actions on the job? Looks like we have no choice but to report this to Papa! Since this guy can have fun in a waking nightmare after being awakened from his dream and then falling asleep and then going to back to wake up again. Actually, this moment, I kind of feel sorry for him now. Hey, what's up? Uh, uh What's the matter, officer? I've been standing here forever, sir, and I really need to go to the bathroom. Why don't you just make a quick trip? The nearest one isn't that far, is it? And there's like four other guards here who could take your place for you. No, it's a short way down the hall beyond these doors, but... I don't want to be blamed for anything that might happen while I'm gone. Oh yeah, the pictures. I don't know if I get to look at these, but these all look like the same judge just over and over again. Bald men with long white beards. Is it been the same judge? For centuries? So, uh, I'm gonna hold it. I'm just gonna... Just try not to pee my pants here. Uh. Perhaps a native gumshoe can be a positive influence on the force after all. Oh, I've gone through here apparently. I didn't want to do that yet. It just made me go through the door. Uh, books? It's a bookshelf. Hmm, what's this? Judge's trial exchange log. It appears to be a journal where the various judges share their thoughts and ideas. The real daily lives of the judges are laid out here on these pages. There's nothing about the court in here. It's just page after page of unrelated drivel. Blah, 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 my grandchild. Blah, 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 my wife. Blah, blah, blah. What is nothing a nail polish? I don't understand. Judging by the content, they are very enthusiastic about the courthouse's daily menu. Oh, I wonder what we're going to have for lunch. Gosh, I wonder what's for lunch today. Gee, I don't know either. Other judge who's a completely different person. Yes, it sure would be nice to know. And it would appear that fried oysters are a favorite. Hmm. Weird. I have no use for such foolishly foolish words from that foolishly foolish crowd. Judges are the vast. Someone please assure me that this is not the true state of this country's judiciary. Hmm. Hmm. Plant? No, I can't look at it. Okay, fine. I'll talk to you. You. Miss you. Oh, it's you, Edgeworth. Well, then who are you? Wait, you were at the crime scene just now, weren't you? You should be disbarred for not knowing who I am. I am Francisca Van Kama, and I am about to become the successor to the family name. About to? I guess that means that for now you're still just another kid. In which case, it's only natural that I didn't know who you are. Why are you whipping me? Ah! <laughs> A real comedy act. Anyway, it looks like you're planning to hold the aliens a bit longer. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's waiting. I'm terribly sorry, but I have to. Uh, but a few more. I have but a few more questions to ask of you. <laughs> Look at you! Eyebrows scrunch with lines in your forehead. Test <laughs> you! <laughs> what exactly is so funny? Oh, sorry, I'm just bad at dealing with just super serious atmosphere. Apparently, they failed to teach you proper behavior at a crime scene in law school. <laughs> it's too much better now. So, what is it you want to talk about? I 
I'd like to inquire as to where you were at the time of the murder. We were in the front of lobby number one the whole time, up until we heard the gunshot. And by we, I mean Mr. Bad. Uh, if you don't believe me, feel free to ask him yourself. You were with Detective Bad? Why? I think it was something to discuss, that's all. What were you talking about with Detective Bad? So I take it that you are acquaintances with Detective Bad. Yep, he was the detective in charge of the KG-8 incident. Detective Bad is also related to that incident? That's right. He was the one who was supposed to protect my sister, Sissy. He sucked. But you know how that turned out, don't you, Edgeworth? Miles Edgeworth? I have no idea what you two are talking about! What?! I part of the KG-8 incident from my papa. But how does that case relate to you, with you? It relates to me that KCC was my little sister. <gasps> You're making that super serious face again! <laughs> I'm fine, really. I just make it a point to rub some more salt in his wounded pride every time I see him. Just, you know, so he feel terrible for the rest of his life. The way she talks about doing that as she laughs away is kind of creepy, again. Well, speaking of Mr. Bad, he and Mr. Faraday, I'd say they met up just about every single time the Yadagarasa made a move. It was practically a given that the two would meet up at every one of the crime scenes. I see. He did mention that he is in charge of the Yadagarasu investigation earlier. Maybe I should ask her what she knows about the Yadagarasu in more detail. Okay, lots of stuff. You claim that at the time of the murder, you were here with Detective... You were with Detective Bad. But don't you lawyers usually discuss such trial with your clients during a recess? We do, and that's what I was planning to do. But Mr. Faraday was being rather threatening, and he dragged Mr. Rell away. After that, Mr. Bad came into lobby number one, so we just stayed there and talked. And what did you talk with Detective Bad about? <laughs> Nothing interesting. I just insulted him so. Talked about how the trial was going, and then I insulted him some more. Call him a real big dum dum. Daddy, when she's not laughing, her mouth seemingly spews nothing but insults. Anyway, Mr. Bad and I were in defendant lobby number one when the murders occurred. So I really can't tell you anything about the hallway or lobby number two. I see. What about Mr. Rell? I'd like to ask you a few questions about your client, Mr. Macrell. Now, your client first claimed to be the Yadagarasu, is that correct? Yeah. Once they heard that it was the Yadagarasu that had made off with the evidence from KG-8, I began to ask Mr. Rell all sorts of questions, but to no avail. Turns out Mr. Rell was not the Yadagarasu. He just made that up. He made it up? Mr. Rell's crime was caught on tape by the security cameras, but there's no footage of him sneaking into the Kodopian embassy itself. Hold on for just one second. And you mean to say that you knew that he was not the real Yadagarasu? And that he was just another cold blooded killer? And you were ready to defend him? Yes, that's right. I see. So a defense lawyer is actually just someone whose job is to cover for criminals. That's why defense lawyers are so detestable. But they are no match for us von Karmas. I don't believe it. You're serious. Why don't you save that face for something really worth being serious about? And Edgeworth, do you remember what I said earlier? I <laughs> my own agenda. <laughs> Still on the hook for you regarding the KG-8 incident, all right? And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer. Don't put words in my mouth. I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Rell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him, ever. So don't you dare suggest I was going to. I'm sorry. Forgive my rashness. Hmm. Miss Yu, I was wondering if you would tell me about the Yadagarasu. The Yadagarasu, huh? Well, I don't really know much about that character myself. But I do get a lot of consultation requests from companies to defend them. Requests from companies? The Yadagarasu isn't some petty thief out for money, you know. <laughs> All right, then. Perhaps the Yadagarasu is in the business of stealing people's lives? You're not very funny. Oh, really, are you, little Mr. Bon Karma? Francisca, be careful about who you whip. 
choose carefully, we may be so- Why? I chose carefully, just like you wanted. <laughs> that just now was hilarious, little missy. Of course it was. It wasn't funny to me. What is wrong with these two women? Why does my pain give them delight? And so in the end, what is the Yatakasu? I have to say, I'd never even heard of this thief when I was in Germany. Yeah, the Russia deals in information. Namely, in digging out dirt about backroom dealings and the like of companies. The Algarasu is a vigilante who steals such info and then makes it public for all to see. Which end or not, this person sounds like just another criminal to me. I suppose you could put it that way too. But either way, I get a lot more clients now thanks to that thief. Sounds like Ms. Yu is profiting nicely. Hmm. I suppose I've gotten all I can out of Miss Yu. I should move on and speak with Detective Gumshoe now. See you later. You. Did you calm down now, finally, Mr. Gumshoe? Detective Gumshoe. Uh, hey, it's you, pal. Are uh, you here? Yowch! As am I. I don't think you needed to whip him to let him know that. I, I didn't do it, pal. I swear on my honor as a detective, I, I really didn't. Your words are useless. I place my trust only in the evidence, detective. Once the investigation is fully over, and should we find out that you are the killer, there will be no mercy to be had for you. I have a heart, pal. Hmm, but you're not worried, right? After all, you have nothing to worry about if you really are innocent, that is. That's right! Hey, pal, go on and do your perfect investigation and get the real killer for me, will ya? Hmm. I would have done so even had you not requested me to, detective. So you and Mr. Faraday had a small meeting last week, did you? And what exactly did you do to make him so angry? I just asked Detective Bad the same thing myself, pal. Turns out he was mad at me because on my very first day as a detective, I reported in on my usual post instead of the criminal affairs department. By the time I got down to criminal affairs, I was really, really late. And that's when he gave me that huge speech. I remember doing the same exact thing in elementary school. On the first day of school every year, I'd always wind up going to my old classroom. How pathetic for the detective to be compared to a mere school child. Pretty sad, pretty sad, Gumshoe. You claim to be standing guard in front of the door to lobby number two during the recess. However, when you did receive the order to do so, and from whom? Uh, early at around uh, 3.20, and from Detective Bad, pal. Today's trial took a really crazy turn, so I was told to make sure nothing happened to Mr. Faraday. And yet something did happen to him, correct? Looks like he was a total waste of manpower to assign you to guard duty. Ow! Your words sting worse than the whip, pal. So it's Dick and Bad who ordered him to stand guard. Hmm. 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 Now then, Detective Gumshoe, is there anything else you'd like to tell me? Um. Nope. Not a thing, pal. In that case, allow us to take a look at what you are carrying on your personage. Rifle through his pockets. Ah! Wait, wait, wait! You can't do that! There's nothing of any particular value here. Well, my handcuffs and badge were confiscated by Detective Bad, so... You know... Hey, what is that open envelope I see sticking out of your coat pocket? Ah! Hands off, pal! Just shut us already! Yo! And you will bonus check within five dollars total, except there is no check inside. You've had your look, now give it back, pal. It's my first bonus as a brand new detective. I just got it in cash today. I had literally no cash on me up until I did, you know. So that envelope's really special to me. Now give it back! You don't need to rubbish like this. Don't try it, we'll throw it away for you later. How could you? Oh, uh, we stole his bonus kit envelope. His one momentum of the time he got a bonus. 
I'm sorry, but I need to take him in for questioning now. I think I've asked him just about everything I needed to. No, wait. Since he became a suspect, there is one piece of evidence that I should reconfirm. I'm sorry I said you wait just a second. I still have one thing I'd like to reconfirm with Detective Gumshoe. Understood. But please make it brief, sir. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. I must confirm whether or not his testimony about when the crime occurred is the truth. Alright, so we're presenting something. So is it the crime scene? I'd like to ask you a little about this. I'm not saying a peep, pal, because I'm not the killer, okay? You misunderstand. I wasn't going to ask you about that. All I ever want to do is to become a detective, pal, so I'd never want to be a killer! It seems that he doesn't want to talk about anything unrelated to his predicament. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Your testimony. You told me earlier that you heard no sound other than the gunshot out in the hallway. Is that correct? No mistake about it, pal. Then you are also claiming that no one passed through the hallway, either. Is that also correct? Yep! Not even a single one passed through the hall while I was on duty! Hmm. 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 You do realize that the lie you're telling is only making life more difficult for yourself. Huh? Oh. But, but it's true! I didn't see anyone go through the hallway. I didn't hear anything else, pal. I bet the killer found a way to kill the two guys that's beyond what I could even imagine. So he intends to continue telling this ridiculous lie. But why would he do so given the situation he's in? I believe a thorough investigation of the hallway in front of the defendant lobbies is in order. What? Ah! You! Ooh. You little brat! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you dropped something now! How could you not notice that coming? <laughs> Wasn't that the child I changed money for earlier? Thanks! That's exactly what I needed! Kids. Can sometimes be so cruel. Looks like she dropped something. Swiss roll. Oh, those are delicious. Mmm, a Swiss cake roll. It's a little Debbie cake. Maybe we should arrest the girl. She might turn out to be a valuable lead. Uh, I believe some sort of punishment may need to be dealt the next time we meet. You have my permission to hit her. Strike the child. I believe that's all that I need to of this man. Now for Detective Bad and the Judge. We have to confirm who is correct. Is the Judge or is that Scarface, right? I suppose you should inspect the hallway in front of Zabi number two next, then. Hmm. I suppose so. Shall we head on over, Francisca? To the hallway! Now that you're out of the way. Get out, get out of my way, you. Move it, you. Oh, the Judge is over here! Okay. So, did you see anything else? Mm, no, I don't think so. I see. Well, thanks for your cooperation. No, it's nothing. Just doing my duty as a defender of the law. That'll be all for now. I'll ask again if I have any other questions. Any time to get you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a few loose ends I have to tie up. Do 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 do. Oh, oh you're that new prosecutor, Mr. Von Karma recommended, right? My name is Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. And I'm Manfred von Karma's daughter, Francisca von Karma. I'm set to become the successor to my genius father any day now, Your Honor. I see, Mr. New Prosecutor, recommended by von Karma, Miles Edgeworth, and... Ah, I bit my tongue. Are you all right, Your Honor? Please help me to refer to me as just Miss von Karma, Your Honor. As for him... Just edge versus fine! Apparently somebody doesn't feel that I'm worthy of a proper title. Oh, very well then. I shall call you Miss Von Karma and Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth. 
Your Honor, Mr. Edgeworth is fine, sir. Now, about your earlier testimony. Yes, what about it, Mr. Edgeworth? I would like to ask you a few questions about what exactly you saw. All right. After all, it's my duty to clarify my testimony as a defender of the law. I, I greatly appreciate your cooperation, Your Honor. Now, the first thing I will need to do is figure out that detective's exact movements. Let's have a chat! I like this guy checking out the... the... I'm looking at the snack machine. Swiss roll! Hmm. If it appears that this eating machine sends snacks and various other foods. Ahaha. Uh -huh. And I see some Swiss rolls, but they're six dollars! That's expensive! Just lovely. What will they think of next? Don't be a jerk and caught like these beef jerks. Fun packet for nine dollars! Defendant's fresh milk, one half pint for seven dollars. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until the end with these for six dollars. They're awfully overpriced. The lineup is simply awful, period. Speaking of snacks, I wonder if that Swiss roll is a little girl dropped from this machine. Mmm, she needed six dollars. We know she got one dollar by trading in coins for us. But I bet she also stole five dollars from Gumshoe to get six dollars total so she could afford a tasty snack. But then she lost it, and now we have it and we're going to eat it. Nom 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 nom. Hmm, I was wondering about that myself. Do 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 do. Yeah, that's already what I'm guessing. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until the end of the seas. The end of what? Well, I assume it means the end of the trial. I suppose this means I want you to eat these during a recess. You can't eat during a trial, so I suppose the only time you can eat them is now, huh? I wouldn't mind if you wanted to eat one now. They come in packs of two, after all. Oh, for in the middle of an investigation. Besides, I don't have six dollars on me. If you want, we can pool our money and buy a pack together and we can share. Back to speed is you and I don't want it. Rude. Do we want to look at all of these? I don't really want to. What logics do I have? Nothing there that's helpful yet. I don't want to look at these. I'll look at them later if I have to. I'll talk- We're leaving the judge kind of hanging, so I'm gonna talk to the judge. Your Honor, I'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Where were you at the time of the murder? My, I, I, do you suspect me of something? I would never, never, never know. No, nothing of this sort, Your Honor. Very, very, very well. You may continue with your testimony. Uh, Your Honor, it's your testimony I'm after. Oh, um, I had no idea you were chasing after me or my testimony. Hmm. I'm beginning to sense that I might want to avoid being in a trial run by this judge. Hopefully I can get a different judge for every trial that I do for the rest of my life. Hmm. 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 Let's see here. Now then, hmm. how should I put this? Uh, when you get to be my age, you need to pay more frequent visits to the restroom. Hmm. Hmm. If you go take a look through the window at the end of this hall, you'll see a small window. That is the window to the men's restroom. In other words, you can see clearly into this hallway from the men's restroom. When I was going into the restroom, that is it you come to, is it? Um, well, he was standing in front of the vending machines, buying something from it. Hmm. However, and this I couldn't believe, when I was about to exit the restroom, there was not a soul in the hallway anymore. Your Honor, if you could please calm down and explain it to me rationally. Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry. Please, let me regain my composure. He was really suspicious. That's what my finally owned judge's intuition said. Although, well, until the murders occurred, I just sort of brushed it off. Ho ho ho! Apparently, this judge doesn't understand the concept of staying calm. That's probably all I'm going to find out from his honor. Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, may I return to my other duties now? Yes, I'm sorry to have held you up. Thank you for your cooperation, your honor. Oh, any time, Mr. Edgeworth, any time. Huh. The judges in this country seem rather friendly. Yes, if not a little wishy-washy. However, I hear that they are known to hand down very fair verdicts. 
How nice. Recycling? Can't look at it. Uh, hey, what are you looking at the vending machines for? Did you find something, officer? I think there's a five dollar bill back there. Come on, just a little more. Is an overworking this crime scene who isn't a total waste of living tissue? Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a single person we can deem useful here. What about you? Not Emma. Look at this justice poster, it's amazing. Have you found any suspicious fingerprints, officer? No, just the fingerprints of those involved with the case, sir. I guess we know all of the players in this case, then, huh? It appear that way, but I have the nagging feeling that we're missing something. And I suspect that what we're missing is hiding right here in this crime scene somewhere. Looking at the poster! He's making a most ridiculous looking face! That may be, but at least he doesn't look like someone who would tell a lie on purpose. I suppose, but to a bon karma, evidence is the only thing that carries any weight! Of course, at any rate, this poster seems to be of no use to us right now. Fire extinguisher? There are no signs this fire extinguisher was used in the crime. If you could already tell from a distance and by you wasting your time examining it. Francisco, let's not try to rush absolute genius. <laughs> I'm smarter than you, and taller than you, and older than you, and I have an attorney's badge, so... Uh, let's look at this window. I noticed there are a lot of ants go marching. I wonder as Nolan inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. All right, I want to look at the ants. The ants are hard at work carrying their food home. It's a marvel that they can pick up such comparatively large objects to their size. Well, if you want to carry a mighty even common name and not be squeezed under it, you'd better work extra hard just like these ants. The same goes for you, Francisca. Uh, let's see. Is this gum? Hmm, what is this? It's a pink-colored piece of trash made of rubber. A balloon? Hmm, I feel I've seen something like this before. But all I see is a piece of garbage. But you know, the fact that there is a little running loose inside the courthouse, it's simply unforgivable! Yeah! I didn't! It's not like how it was I who littered! Garbage belongs in a rubbish bin! Yeah. Cactus? Yeah. What's the matter? I pricked myself on one of these cactuses' needles. I didn't think the needles on this thing would be so sharp. Well, what did you expect? Can you imagine how bad it would be if you were hit on the head by one of these? Anyways, the cactus seems to be unrelated to our case. Do you really think so? Because I believe that this cactus sitting on this windowsill is completely related. Mmm, I think it popped a balloon. But why? But how? Oh, well then I look forward to your explanation of how exactly it is related. We'll look at that in a minute. Oh man, there's a bunch of stuff here. What are these black speckles? I believe it's a pile of ants eating away. Oof, that detective, he claims not a single ant slipped by him. And it is a whole heel of them! Gah! What are you hitting me for? As a replacement for that pathetic detective! Ugh. Perhaps I should add this deduction to the detective's growing tab of pay cuts. Anyway, I wonder what the ants are eating. From the look and sweet smell of it, pieces of cake and chocolate from a Swiss roll. Mm. So somebody was eating a Swiss roll right over here. And there look like some sticky fingerprints over here. Miles Edgeworth, the court has to be kept pristine at all times! Ugh. It wasn't me that dropped food on the ground. The courthouse must be kept clean! No! Fine, fine, fine. The dirt on this bench, it smells like some sort of sweet substance. I can't believe there's someone going around dirtying the courthouse for shame! Hold it. Calm down, Francisca. Now take a good look 
Doesn't this smudge look kind of like a handprint to you? I suppose it could be. Hmm. <coughs> Which means that perhaps we can lift the print of the person who sullied this binge. I see. And since we know the identity of our mystery slob. You there. The lab technician. Could you please find out who this handprint belongs to? Sir, yes, sir. Dup, 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 dup. I got the results of the fingerprint analysis, sir. And do we know who they belong to? Sir, the fingerprints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Oh, interesting. Good work, officer. Okay, Detective Gumshoe's fingerprintos. And there you have it? Yes, I suppose so. Now, if you know the identity of the person who dirty the bitch, I sense that you and I will be using this information in very different ways. Look at the bench itself. Uh, and to point out of the hole in this bench as well. I wonder if the inside of this bench consists of nothing but ants. Don't you dare continue with that cross line of thought! <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Okay, alright. We got some logic things to combine, but I want to look at this bathroom window first. So that window on the other side belongs to the men's restroom. I can't see it. At your height, I'm not surprised. So if the judge didn't see him, because Gumshoe was just sitting down. So he would have been standing up in front of the window, buying a piece of candy, and then he sat down at the bench eating a uh, Swiss cake roll. So he didn't leave his post. He's not lying. I, that's my theory. No! I guess short people have feelings too. Okay. These bars. So that window on the other side. Oh, it's the same. This is the same dialogue. Okay. I thought he was gonna talk about the bars. All right, we got a lot, a lot of logic things now. Um, the pink piece of trash I think is related to the cactus. But first, I'm gonna look at the Swiss cake roll crumbs and the vending machine, maybe. Let's see if this does anything. Yep, good, good. These bits of chocolate and cake, could they not have come from a Swiss roll? A Swiss roll? Why would the courthouse sell a thing like that? It may not seem like the right venue, however it is being sold right over there. The vending machine? Ah, I see. Stay in your choice as Swiss tune to the end of these. Two for six dollars, talk about expensive. Leaving the fact that it's on the expensive side aside, the fact that the cake crumbs and chocolate bits were found in this hallway suggests that they came from a Swiss roll that was purchased from this machine. Also, who buys a hot dog from a vending machine? By the way. Hmm, I think I have a pretty clear picture of what happened here now. Huff, <laughs> naturally, at all I'm here, aren't I? Detective Gumshoe must have sat on this bench as he ate a Swiss roll. And as he ate, he dropped it on the floor and sullied the bench. Oh, how could he not have cleaned up after himself? How utterly despicable! Don't you dare with me again! It wasn't I who made the mess in the first place! Anyway, it was indeed Dedded of Gumshoe who bought the Swiss roll. Uh, it's not the price for the hot dog that bothers me so much as buying it from a vending machine. I think that's where I'm like... Hmm... That creates a rather interesting contradiction of facts. A contradiction? There! I think another look at this special courthouse bidding machine is in order. So the deduction is that he wouldn't be able to afford it. I want to try combining this pink piece of trash with the cactus. Just because I feel like they're related, before we get too far on that tangent. Yeah! This pink rubbery substance. I saw this in a different form earlier today. I believe this is a piece of a popped balloon. I suppose that's possible. The balloon probably got a little too close to our friend, the windowsill cactus. That could be the logical conclusion, yes. Okay, and that adds it to our, our inventory. Okay, good, good. Just keeping that logic cleared out. If we get too many things in our brain, then it gets harder to press the button later. All right. Let's look at our thing here. 
and see what we can find. So we are going to deduce because his Swiss cake roll is expensive. And because we know that his bonus was a scant five dollars, he should not have been able to afford this. Because he said he had zero cash. Or oh, about Detective Gumshoe's finances. He said that until this morning, he didn't have even a single penny on his personage. Just how poor is that guy? If his bonus really was only five dollars, then he should not have been able to purchase a pack of Swiss rolls. However, the facts being as they are, we found cake crumbs on the floor. Meaning Scrappy must have bought a pack somehow. Indeed. The detective should not have been able to purchase a pack, and yet he did. The question is, how? Okay, alright. Uh, let's talk to Bad. Because we've been kind of ne neglecting him this whole time. Did Bad, I have something I wish to inquire about. Doing something actual whack you? I wish to inquire into Detective Gumshoe's movements during the recess. You're getting in the way of the investigation. I have an order from Mr. Von Karma himself, plus I still hold investigative authority. So I hear you were the one who called for Detective Gumshoe to come down here. Fairy Day? That guy was just accused, you know? I just knew some bad thing was gonna happen. My detective's instinct told me. A letter couldn't deep you. You couldn't even protect one lone prosecutor, that's it. Uh. Hold it. Franziska, I think you need to apologize. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Detective Bad. Please continue. Hmm. I used the phone on the first floor and called the precinct. I told them to send somebody over. And that detective's the one that showed up. Hmm. And only upon his arrival did you set Detective Gumshoe to stand guard, Detective Bad? Yeah, I waited for him on the first floor. After he got here, we came up to these defendant lobbies together. As we entered this hallway, we ran into you. She told us that Faraday was really mad. And that he dragged Rel off to lobby number two to have a word or something. And that Faraday had said to not let anyone interrupt them. So what choice did I have? All I could do was tell the big lug to stand guard outside. Hey, alright. And around what time did all of that take place? Let's see. I think it was about 30 minutes before I heard the gunshot. They were already dead by then. I'm guessing right now. I'm already suspicious that they were already dead. After giving the big lug his assignment, he never left the hallway. Not once. Oh, and how can you make such a claim? Hmm. One of the guards out in this floor's main lobby swore to me he didn't. If the detective never left the hallway, then where did he disappear off to? <laughs> That's simple. He must have gone into lobby number two, just as I suspected. You and I, we were in lobby number one next door. The only one without an alibi is Gumshoe. Mm, it would seem that I am still missing some key pieces of information. Let's talk about the gunshot. We're going to present this with cake roll to him, because at some point, I think. Detective Bad, you also heard the gunshot, did you not? Yeah. I heard it when I was in defendant lobby number one. That's why I uh, came running towards lobby number two together with you. How much time elapsed between you hearing the gunshot and your arrival on the scene? I bet they didn't hear a gunshot. I bet they heard a balloon. Less than a minute. What were your movements upon hearing the gunshot? I grabbed the big lug who was just walking around in the hall and raced in lobby number two. And that's when we discovered the bodies in that order. That makes you the class cover as a crime scene, right? Yeah, I guess it does, little miss. I'm about to become a prosecutor very soon! You've treat me with the dignity I deserve or else! Huh, you ain't that thing around anymore. And I'll have you arrested for obstruction, little miss. You wouldn't dare! 
<laughs> Just joking. Or am I? Detective Bad is really something if you can make Francisca behave. Are we about done? Is there anything else I should ask him about? Um, I know he was in the lobby number one. The situation around the gunshot sounds more interesting than either of those. I'd like to know a little bit more about the circumstances under which you heard the gunshot. Like I said, I was in lobby number one with you. I have nothing else to add. Well, the testimony certainly corroborates with, with what you said. Miles, you already asked him about that, remember? Hmm. I suppose I should ask him about something else. Is there anything else? Let's see. The time? I'd like you to tell me the exact time you heard the gunshot. It was around the end of the recess, and the trial was about to start again, I think. He was supposed to make time for himself to transfer the evidence he was holding. But I got the sense he wasn't going to show for the handoff. So I figured I should go get him, or he'd be late. I just as I thought that, bang, the sound of a gunshot hit my eardrums. So they heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to restart. Huh. Okay, got your testimony. Are we done here? I don't have any time to waste. Oh, come on. All you're doing is standing in front of this door doing nothing. Hmm. I get the sense that he is somewhat investigating this crime scene. Or rather, that he is keeping us under surveillance. But to what end? Dr. Bad, may I ask you that you cooperate with us for just a bit longer? I don't have anything else to say to the two of you. You guys were the ones who said you wanted to investigate in the first place. Find it! Be obstinate! We'll do it just do as we please! Come on, Miles! You may no longer be willing to help us, however. May I ask for the forensic scientist's cooperation? Do as you like. Okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We found all of the clues. I believe I now have a very firm grasp on what happened here. Ah, well, I do too, she said, lying. It's all right, Francisca. Would you care to share what conclusions you come to? Why should I do that? We're in the middle of a competition, you know. We should be checking to see if your conclusions are wrong first, so you go ahead. It's almost cute that she's going this far to ensure that she wins. Almost. Very well, but first we need to pay his honor a visit to correct his testimony. <laughs> 